atiya rasul ul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself an article ajeezu da'ifu miskeen wa zalim wa jahal and but for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence. Alhamdulillah that the 15th of Shaban and the spiritual new year which Allah writes and corrects and rewrites the destiny of creation and mankind, jinni wa ins and he can write and blot out and correct whatever Allah wants. The immensity of that night, a night of uh, immense blessings to be spent in prayers and contemplation. That Allah write for us goodness and take away difficulties and that grant us a life with actions that are pleasing to the Divine and that filled with Divine grace and majesty. Also that night the blessings of the birth of Imam Mahdi that coming on Nasr Shaban and according to awliya but alhamdulillah that any time we remember holy souls has a tremendous importance and Imam Mahdi represents the Muhammadan Hadi means uh, the highest level of Muhammadan guidance that uh, is available upon this creation. The most guided representative of the holy family of Sayyidina Muhammad and representing the holy companions of Sayyidina Muhammad and the source and power for all awliyaullah fi samai wa filat and that the immense reverence and to live a life to be muntazir, to be in waiting. That every action, every action is based on intention. We don't know the length of our life but only Allah come into our life and always say, make intention to live a life in which you see Sayyidina Mahdi and that you live your life in preparation for His arrival and that becomes the completion of faith. That uh, judgment day and preparation for judgment day is not something possible. You write the fire. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. final chapter of your life before you set out to make your book. Means everybody's trying to unfold their book in life that, what will I do, what will I be, how will I be an awliya and this is the way of Sayyidina Muhammad is write the last chapter of your book first. What is it that you want as an ending in your book? That you want faith, you want Divine satisfaction, you want to reach to the realities, the highest of realities, to have the best of character, to have an immense vessel of Divine love which requires immense discipline and immense grace. And all these things that are being taught that we write as our final chapter and literally write them. That my Lord this is what I want, this power of manifestation is not for parking spaces and it's not for literal, for lottery tickets. The power that God has given to us to manifest that the devils are jealous of it and they make us to use our own power 
to curse ourselves and destroy ourselves. For they have no power except in what God has given. And the power that we have in believing in them and them hijacking our abilities and using it for nefarious purposes. But in this way of reality is to write my final chapter that this is what I destined for my life my Lord, this is what I'm hoping that you grant me a means towards this and you write each thing. I want this level of faith, I want this level of love for the reality, I want this character and all of these realities and awliya come into our life and say, make sure that within that chapter is that you want to be in service to Sayyidina Mahdi You want to see that Muhammadan guide that comes and a saviour in humanity that he's not Sayyidina Isa salam. these are different personalities. And that I want to be in the time of Sayyidina Mahdi salam. I want to be of service to Sayyidina Mahdi salam. and I want to live my life so that I would be chosen in that reality. And that gives us an ability to prepare. So people hoping that they'll prepare for judgment day, no, Prophet gave to us that prepare for the Armageddon, prepare for Qiyamah, prepare for difficulties. That's a real life preparation of faith that just to say, okay I hope the end is good and I'll somehow get to there, that's not the diligence that people of faith should have. They should be very diligent writing exactly what they want, how they're going to achieve that goal. This is the greatest goal that we can imagine. People want goals for colleges and schools and life but this encompasses all our life. For if you write the final chapter you'll know who you should be choosing as a spouse. You know what type of work you should be doing because you saw your final chapter. You, you'll know that if you choose this there's no way you'll get to that chapter and if you choose this there'll be no way that you can get to that chapter. So it means that final chapter will control the course of our entire book and lays the foundation of that direction. And for Sayyidina Mahdi salam, it's immense importance that my Lord let me to be from those helpers and supporters in which I give my life to that support and to be of service to Sayyidina Mahdi salam. And then our life is then living a way of, how am I going to achieve that? I'm going to find those that love Sayyidina Mahdi salam. And the true love for Sayyidina Mahdi salam is the love for the entire nation, not the love of one specific group and then they curse another group. But these people of Muhibeen and Ashiqeen they have the best of character, means they, they love the entire nation of Sayyidina Muhammad and they want and want a peace for all of creation and all those whom are doing good. As a result we've described many times before the people whom accompany and to reach to the reality of Sayyidina Mahdi salam are the people of muhabbat, a divine love and divine grace in which their characteristics and the softness of their character, the subtleness of their heart and the frequency of their heart is such that lends them to be very soft, very subtle, they're latif. As a result of those characteristics Allah writes them to be from amongst the sincere inshaAllah. And that, that lends immense grace to our life that, Ya Rabbi I want to be from that reality. When you make that intention inshaAllah Allah then write us the ajr and the actions that will take us to that course. Means the reason you write them and every day look at your final chapter in life, that every day my Lord that provide a means in which for me to reach my chapter. When you don't write it and don't manifest it, you keep it as something hidden. What is the, the role of shaitan in life? Is to make mankind forget. Forget what they promised their Lord 
and they can go from night time and morning they forgot exactly what they said. And Allah reminds men and mankind that when your life is stormy you call out to me and make all sorts of pledges and pleadings. And when I return your life and your ship to safety you forgot to say, no I didn't say that and you go about your way. But when we write our life and what we want and what we're expecting of these good characteristics and we look at that final chapter like post-it notes or writing it somewhere for us to review on a daily basis, then we pray for our Lord grant me a means in which to achieve that reality, that inspire my heart to be of service, inspire my heart to be generous, inspire my, my being to have a kindness to all your creation and to be alert, to be meditating, contemplating which is a great struggle in reaching realities. This is not the way of people whom they basically can go into the wilderness and, and meditate and think that they'll achieve peace because they just said they're going to achieve peace. The greatest peace is the greatest fight against oneself. The Jihad al-Akbar that Prophet described, the greatest fight means greater than fighting outside is the fight inside. So it's what they call a, an oxymoron that you say peace but the only way to achieve peace is a great fight. Means the fight with oneself to come against desires, to come against what's easy to come against everything that the, the body wants to inflict upon the self is a tremendous fight, a tremendous battle. If somebody says something to you to stay quiet, if somebody shows a, a bad characteristic to give a softness. And the greatest example of what God wants from us is nature. And we've said this many times, so Allah is just saying, look you're, you're not extraordinary. If you look to my nature they serve me completely. If you can mimic just the portion of the natural world, nature, you would have achieved sainthood. So you go to a tree, a fruit tree, you hit the tree it gives you fruit. It doesn't have a, a branch that comes down and hit you in the head. You take special woods and fragrances, the agar wood and you burn them, you chop them. That tree had, had zikr, that tree has a life, that tree has everything. But it serves the Divine and when God's servants come and begin to burn the branches of that tree it releases a fragrance. And all the beautific flowers that God has created that all have a praising and Divine praise that they sing in all different tunes to the Divinely Presence by the grace of the sun that dresses them. If you take many of those flowers begin to crush them they release a tremendous oil and fragrance for humanity. So everything in nature is of service and shows exactly the service that God is talking about. So we don't have to make it up and we don't have to say, no that's not the, the way it's supposed to be. Is the natural religion, Islam is a natural religion, Sharia is the natural religion of Allah the natural laws of Allah What they do now is unnatural and imposing unnatural rules upon humanity that even the mind cannot grasp it. So that's unnatural. But everything that Allah wants for us, everything that Prophet brought for us is all around us as a symbol in nature. And that's why Allah says, I'll show you upon the horizon and that I'll show you within yourself. When people don't understand that well, how should I be and what should my demeanour be, copy nature. That you hit nature it gives you back fruits. You pluck the flowers and it gives you a beauty. Everything about nature is serves and as a result of its service it's its elevation, it's understood that live a life of service. As you serve you elevate your reality. 
And then our life becomes very clear, my life is then to find a way to be of service. As a result of that service that's how we elevate our reality to reach new realities. From all of these blessings and dressings this becomes the natural way to receive God's grace and Islam is all from that reality, how to submit myself to the will of the Divine and how my will is not important but how to bring God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven, how to bring Allah's will on my heart as it is in the heaven so that I can walk on this earth as a heavenly creation with a heavenly heart and God's Divinely will upon my heart and not the, the will of the ego and bad character. So that's why we see that in this world that we live in that's an immense struggle, immense struggle. For every time you want to enact or revive God's way upon our life everything of the physical world counters that, says there's no need for that. And be angry, be aggressive, be confused, be everything other than peaceful, be everything other than of service to God's creation. So we pray that Allah give us more and more understandings as a result of these holy nights and these intentions to serve and these intentions to be with these holy personalities. We pray that Allah give us a means in which to achieve that and how daily our life is to look at how am I going closer to my goal or the choices I'm making take me further from my goal. Because that's why then you come back and say, okay I have to be good to people, I have to have manners to people, I should stay quiet around people, I shouldn't inflict uh, harm against people, I shouldn't agitate and aggravate. All of these are based on, I have to achieve my goal. If somebody is truly concerned about only their grave and their goal then they don't have to bother people. And it answers all these questions, they say, oh shaykh somebody bothered me, do I, can I, can I respond, if somebody did like this, should I say like that? Everything comes back to, is it going to benefit your grave? Is it going to benefit your path towards the reality that you're asking for? You're asking to be crowned by the Divine and to be dressed by the Divine. So it's best to worry about oneself on how to achieve that grace and as a result people elevate. And at the same time people have asked about these energies because all is in the same pattern that shaykh when you talk about uh, the mirage and the movement towards these realities. These spiritual beings for us to understand because we have to give an analogy from the physical world we understand to achieve spiritual realities that we don't understand. Means if, if we think of these personal realities and these souls to be in the presence of very holy souls. It's not a distance in which you travel. So you don't have to figure, how am I going to move myself like a rocket ship somewhere? But for us to understand it's more the reality of frequencies. So if you understood that and for us just to understand an analogy, there are veils and let's say we're at veil one. And you're trying to get through these veils to veil 10. Each of these veils are frequencies and the frequency in which you resonate means your, your actual light vibration based on your chanting, your purity, your good character because it, it, doesn't, it doesn't resonate high when your physicality is low. So become very self-evident. So if you're at a resonance and you're at a, a, at a point of whatever point that is, you can go down and you can experience down below you. At whatever point you resonate at you can experience lower at any time.
is the nature of your resonance. So if you resonate and just for an analogy you resonate at 10. You can go from 10 down to minus 10, minus 100. Means you can go easily into demonic forces because all that are of a lower resonance they can never go up. You have to go down to meet them. So it's not really up or down but you're gonna go into a different veil, you'll go to a different point. So when shaitan knows that, he knows that you're at a 1 or 2 or a 10 and he begin to play bad things for you, see bad things to you, you hear bad things, what happens? He's lowered your frequency. As a result you lost access to the higher realm and then he brought you down to the lower realm, why? Because the one who's waiting at negative 2 is waiting there for you. The one at negative 5 is really hoping for you to come. So they say in a song that, I've been waiting for you. There's a satanic song with somebody saying, I've been waiting for you a long time, meaning what? We finally got your resonance to come so low that we're able to enter to you and move to you. So our life is about these frequencies because new people come and they say, oh this zikr and this program and this program, this recitation, this recitation, you sit for hours to re recite and all of these can be understood based on energy, all practices. When you understand it based on energy then you understand that you're now at 5 or 6 or 10. You do your chanting, you do your prayers, everything. You wash to clean your frequency, you do your prayers to raise your frequency, you do your chanting to raise your frequency. You don't wash, you lowered your frequency. So it's, it's not a matter of somebody saying, I don't have to do that, I took a shower. No, everything that the Prophet of Islam brought for us can now be understood by energy people. Every action that you do is either going to raise your frequency or lower your frequency. If you lower your frequency then the lower demonic forces have access to you. So when people are feeling energies, feeling very bad energies coming around them, feeling themselves to be at attacked means the frequency is so low for them as a result the, your elevator went down. And there's other things coming into your floor, the door, door opened and they came in. So our life was about elevating the frequency. So that's why we talk as up and down but it's not really up and down, it actually is going through veils forward and backwards. If you lower the frequency your movement in the veils have gone down, as a result you're in the realm of very demonic energies. And if your eyes should open in those realms you would see those demonic forces. And that's why they tried to convince people on television to do DMT and to do all sorts of psycho… Uh, psychotropic medications and drugs. Why? Because they know that those people are resonating at very, very low frequencies. They sought the world and entertained themselves with all sorts of horrific satanic practices idol worshipping and all sorts of things that have what? Lowered their frequencies. So the demons would like nothing better than now open your eyes so that we can guide you within this realm. So then the use of an outside element to alter your ability of your mind and what you can see. Imagine then how dangerous that is, that you go in a veil to a, a negative elevator floor, you're going down to the basement and they give you a drug so that the elevator door can open and that you'll be lost in the lower levels of that building, at the lower levels of those veils. And if they catch you in that veil and lock your mind, many people can lose their mind in those lower levels and the danger of doing those things and the danger of how people are 
experimenting with these horrific sort of satanic understandings. And they deem them to be good. They say, oh no, this is a spiritual experience, it's a demonic experience. The spiritual spirit experience requires fighting, not the smoking and drinking contaminants. That's a demonic, anything that comes free and cheap and looks like mud water, it's demonic. And what Prophet described for us is a great fight. If you're willing to fight, and really fight against your demons, your bad character and have disciplines and what happens? You begin to combat all of these, you begin to meditate and contemplate, you begin every night to think, who did I harm with my words and with my actions? And then I'll make an inventory of myself and that's when we gave the talk before is that who sits on your chair of authority? You think it's your soul? Well your soul when it sits on your chair of authority it prays and worships and gives and does everything like an angel. But 99% of people who sits on their chair is a demon and Allah described, we have given everyone and attached to everyone a shaitan, it's given. It's in Qur'an that there's a shaitan attached to everyone and he sits on the chair 99% of the time. And then the other 1% is their nafs and the ego, the bad ego with bad desires. Our life is to fight those two and get the soul to be sitting upon the chair. So that means that they meditate, they contemplate, they do their zikrs, they keep their washing, they keep themselves clean, they have the discipline to pray as a result of all these actions and Ramadan coming now, they fast. Ramadan is a great reset because it comes as a Divine gift to humanity. Then I'm going to give you in this month of Ramadan the Divinely uh, authority Allah describes to Prophet anyone who enters into Ramadan and fasting, I give the gift directly to their reality of which no eyes have seen and no ears have ever heard. Means each one receives their unique treasure and a great reset upon the body. Why? So that all the contaminants for the last 12 months as soon as you entered into that Ramadan month will all be burned, all be reset. So that when they leave Ramadan they're like a newborn child with their soul and, and their nafs has been burned and cleaned. So for the nation every, you know, you go 12 months till you get back to the Ramadan point is an immense reset. So every time you do your spiritual practices and all the different practices, what happens? You're elevating your frequency. It means what now? You can go to the second veil, third veil, fourth veil and you begin to move with your vibration into these realms. So people don't understand and, and they try to think of it like, oh it's not possible like you're going flying through a rocket, no it's not a rocket at all. It's just the vibration in which you resonate, you're going through these parda and veils and they see them like in thousands. And because of the frequency in which you resonate, you move through many of these veils and as you move through them you begin to have access to the higher realms of creation and that's what's important. So when they're teaching you do all these practices, do all these meditations, do all these energy practices, connect with the shaykh, make your muraqaba, why? So that they can train you that you're building your energy frequency, now let us train you on how to observe within these realms. But you need a guide. Right? Because you don't know, did you go into what realm and did you really think your action was good and maybe they took you to a lower basement level. So people who do self-help or they do their self thing and they have a spirit guide and not a physical guide, they don't know if they took their elevator to the basement floor because the shaitan played with them and spirits play with people. And they have inappropriate acts, inappropriate character, inappropriate disciplines. 
How could your body be doing inappropriate things but you think you sent your soul into higher frequencies? No. I mean the logic has to match. The body has to be cleaned, the actions of the body have to be cleaned as a result of their spiritual practices and their physical practices of their body and their discipline, they're able to move into the higher frequencies and the higher veils. And those veils are the personalities of these very high level souls. At that time they sit upon amongst them, they be dressed from them, we have their teaching and their associations amongst these. And as they spiritually increase now they have access to more and more of these veils and frequencies and different associations because each of those associations are being held at different frequencies. So now if you're from 10 you're at 500, what is that? At 500 what happens to you? Means you can go all the way up to the 500 for example and everything within that realm and everything below that realm. Because as much as you go up you have access to all the veils. But the one who only goes up to 10 can only go to the floor of that level, they can't go above that. They can't imagine that, they have no understanding from that. So if that makes sense inshaAllah because people want to think if it's up and you're going to have to move to somewhere. No, it's just the vibration in which you're vibrating as a result of the purity of the physicality, pure, purity of the soul and the connection with these awliya, your vibration takes you into many pardas. And as a result from where you were to where you've gone all those maqams are accessible, all those knowledges and personalities at these different level are accessible. All the way to Warith al-Muhammadiyyah means into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad in which encompasses all the knowledges and all the veils. And then from within that up to Prophet how much he wants to dress upon the servants. So our life is to elevate. And shaitan's purpose is to bring the vibration of humanity down. And when the vibration comes down what happens? They inflict upon themselves badness, they ingest upon themselves badness, they write upon themselves badness. So you see a direct correlation between the vibration of their soul and what's happening to their physicality. So you know the two are locked, right? So when the soul is vibrating and the shaitans make them to lower their vibration, they eat really scary foods, dangerous, dirty, not cooked, things that are not right to be eaten, cockroaches and creatures and all the creatures that eat the waste of mankind, you know that run into the sewers of mankind. Why? Because their physicality, their vibration was brought so far down that now their physicality is being convinced of all of these lower desires, marking upon themselves, marking upon everything, actions that are not appropriate. But when they elevate their vibration what happens? They begin to change what they eat, how they eat, what they drink, how clean they are, how pure they are, how they frequent uh, fragrance themselves. So that they imitate the reality of their soul by elevating and elevating. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding and more and more understanding of how those disciplines open the immense realities of Islam, Iman, Wal Maqam, Al Ihsan, and that uh, taught only by the tariqahs, which are the spiritual inheritors of these realities. And the rest are people whom are satisfied with only the, the physical realm of acceptance and they have not accepted the spiritual realm. The tariqahs are the path in which they accepted the physical realities of Islam and the spiritual realities that you must perfect the outside and you must perfect the inside. As a result this crescent moon and the star are perfected, means the physicality has to be perfected and then the spirituality has to be perfected. If the spirituality is perfected 
it will reflect upon the physicality its perfection and be a luminous and illuminated individual inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal azzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.